my French will not be good enough that I can do this presentation in French, but if I come back often enough, then maybe I can improve on that uh, for the next year, perhaps. Well, um, I think uh, Marie introduced me as a Bing Maps technology specialist. I'm looking after uh, our customers and partners in Europe, Middle East, and Africa from the technical side, and that means I do presentations like this one. Um, this is well announced as a level 200, so fairly low level on the technical side. I do sometimes keynote speeches as well on industry events, but I also can go down to technical trainings, uh, build proof of concepts, and uh, in fact I will uh, mention at the end of this session that we will have a full what day workshop where we go more into the technical details uh, in early March, on the 3rd of March. Um, well, so before I really start with my presentation talking about uh, location data and bringing them to life, uh, let me give a uh, give me please a feeling for who is in the audience. So who of you actually writes code? Okay, about half of you. Um, who of you um, has already worked with Bing Maps? A third perhaps, maybe less. Uh, who of you has seen Bing Maps? Not many more. Uh, well, this is, uh, this is a surprise. Uh, so uh, who of you has then worked with Google Maps or um, played with Google Maps around? Okay, so a much larger group, so I hope we can change that by the end of the session. Um, that means um, I, I will do a lot of, of introduction about what is really in the platform, and I want to do something and talk about uh, the current trends that I see. I mean, mapping and what you know from Google Maps and what you see in Google Maps and, and Bing Maps today, that is something that is very well known. It is uh, increasingly popular for the last five years. It's nothing so groundbreaking new anymore. But there are still a lot of trends, uncharted territory that we are about to conquer over the next couple of years, and I will talk about some of these uh, current trends that I can foresee. Um, then we will talk about various aspects, how you can combine business intelligence technologies uh, and location awareness to create something like location intelligence. So have a dashboard, for example, have insights into sales figures and CRM applications, into insurance application, risk analysis and management, these kind of things by leveraging location information for that. And then uh, we will have also a quick look at uh, what will be in much more detail in this uh, full day workshop in March where we go and uh, integrate uh, spatial aware databases like SQL Server, SQL Azure and there are a couple of others that I don't want to mention today um, that uh, can be integrated relatively easily with Bing Maps and I will show a few patterns that uh, would help there. Uh, as well as the integration with SharePoint, one of the portals that many of you probably already use or know. Now, since not everybody of you has actually even seen Bing Maps, uh, allow me to have a quick look at this as well. So if we look at uh, bing.com slash maps, uh, we have the typical uh, user portal here, here at a relatively low resolution, uh, 1024 times 768 pixel only, and you see that we can smoothly navigate around here in that map. That is, by the way, Ajax technology, so you don't need to install any browser plugins at all to do something like that. Now, not surprisingly, there are things in there like, for example, uh, the ability to switch into uh, aerial images or even into oblique aerial images so that we can turn these images around in 90 degree steps and look from the north, south, east, and west. Uh, to such uh, locations like here, the Palais de Congrès. Now, um, there are lots of things that you can do with this sort of um, uh, website already and can discover here. We can calculate driving directions, for example, from Charles de Gaulle. If I just type in Charles de Gaulle and I want to have the driving rather than the walking directions, obviously, uh, we see I can uh, provide avoid options, so I want to avoid motorways or toll roads. These kind of things are part of that. And then I can calculate the directions, and if I feel that anything here is not to my liking, if I think, for example, that it might be uh, better that I drive this way, then I can just uh, drag any point on the road and redirect this, um, for example, this way, and it will automatically recalculate what we see here. On top of that, there are lots of, of features and applications that you can build around Bing Maps, and a very good way to discover that, actually, if you don't find it here, is have a quick lab, look at, uh, at uh, Bing Maps in the US. You might have seen what I've done here. 
Um, so I clicked on um, on the link that was here, go to Bing Maps in the United States, and there we see there are lots of features, uh, lots of more buttons here, for example, traffic information, and one that is quite interesting, it mentions map apps, little applications that you can run in the context of Bing Maps. So uh, these applications, let's take this one, for example, street side photos, um, that can be something that Microsoft develops as a teaser for something that we test drive in our labs and want to showcase and want to find out if that is of interest for the audience, can also be something that you develop as a private person, as a developer, as a company to showcase your technologies or what you can do with location data. Now if we look at this here, for example, uh, these are uh, street side images that we acquired um, with cars driving through the streets. Uh, you know that probably from, from Google as well, similar things. And here we have used something that taps into um, Flickr photos. So if it was geotech this photo, then we can match that into the current contracts. So this is the images that we saw here when we uh, were driving through the streets in Vancouver. And this is now what 1945 the person saw when he was creating this photo. Yeah? And so you see it is very well matched into the street side images. It's using a technology that you may or may not know from, from something that we call Photosynth. It was developed from the um, uh, Windows Live Labs uh, a couple of years ago and basically creates uh, three-dimensional perspectives from normal uh, photos that you capture with the Digicam. Now there are many more of these applications that you see here um, it is uh, things like um, integration with OpenStreetMaps, a fancy thing that gives you a treasure card here, for example, the destination maps. There is uh, a parking finder, integration with um, Foursquare and with Facebook, of course. There is an application that shows piracy attacks. Uh, so th this is one of the examples where our partner IDB Solutions wanted to showcase one of their technologies that they do to create heat maps, for example, and much more. Tweet heat, for example, yeah, so that would create heat maps if we wanted to find out what's a hot topic here at the tech days nowadays in this week, then we could create this sort of heat map with this little application here as well. Now that was um, a very, very quick uh, um, show of, of some of the things that are in the Bing Maps platform, but let me come back to what I actually wanted to tell you about uh, the current trends that I foresee. Now, in this current trends, um, we, we find that imagery in general, aerial images, be it um, from a satellite or from a, from a low-flying plane, that is becoming more and more commodity. Uh, you can hardly differentiate yourself anymore with just having maps and a couple of aerial images. But the quality of these aerial images, that matters. Uh, and these uh, qualities and the update cycles that you can implement there, they do matter. And uh, we have started the program, um, I think it was uh, last year, it's uh, an 18 months program, together with our partner Digital Globe that you see here. So we equipped them with large-scale digital aerial cameras, uh, something that not many people know. In Graz, in Austria, we developed these uh, very uh, high quality and quite expensive cameras as well, 196 megapixel. Um, and they can uh, capture information with a ground resolution of up to two and a half centimeter per pixel. Uh, they sell at about the million US dollar a piece. Uh, comes them with a server, so they are reasonably expensive, I would say. Uh, so we equipped this partner with that sort of camera technology, and they are flying now uh, continuous patterns around Europe uh, and the United States to cover high-quality images and keep that up to date. Um, we also see, you have seen me demonstrating that before, the type of high quality images that is uh, very um, rare still, uh, oblique aerial images, so they are uh, here derived from a technology that was developed by one of our partners, Pictometry in this case. It's a five camera system, one is top down, two to the sides, one to the front and one to the rear, and that means that we can turn around all these images so that we have north, um, south, east, or west on top of the image. Yeah? So we can literally walk around this building. Now that is of course not true 3D and it is not necessarily the perspective that you would see when you go through the streets. So you obviously see something like the street side images and you see there is a recurring pattern. 
We don't do that all alone. Yeah? We always work with partners. We provide some technology, we publish the data, but these partners do a lot of the acquisition of this data. Navtech, for example, who is also the partner who provides us with the roadmaps, is uh, driving through the streets anyway, and they will be equipped with our um, camera system that is car mounted, and it allows you then to have the sort of, of images from the driver perspective. Now that technology is becoming more and more interesting, not just from the driver perspective where you go through public roads and you can easily capture large areas. You might also be interested in going into parks, for example, animal parks, zoos. In this case, it's a golf course and somebody was walking around with a portable camera, so we really literally a camera in a backpack and he was creating that sort of street side images um, while he was walking along that golf course and playing his 18 holes there. Um, now still, this is uh, not uh, all too surprising. Uh, we go into more level of detail, of course, as well. So here we see that on top of the maps, we also have the ability to go inside the shopping mall, for example, and find out where all these stores are. Yeah? So if I click on this here, let's have a quick look at the uh, Roosevelt Field Mall. So here we see the overlays, all vector data. If I zoom in a little bit closer here, yeah, we see that... Uh, we have various stores. I can have a quick look here. I can uh, partially even do uh, shopping through the sites. Uh, there's a game shop. There's even some an Apple computer store. Uh, so if I want to buy the latest version of iPhone, uh, I know now exactly where I have to go. Um, another trend that we see is, is the personalization of the mapping experience. Yeah? So you saw me that demonstrating with the street side photos already. Um, we want to have something that really shows it as we remember it when we visited the place. Yeah? So it might be um, nice when you see wonderful street side images from Seattle in the sunshine, but probably when you were there it was raining. Yeah? So in that case, uh, if we could do something like what you saw me doing with the street side photos, this is what we see today. This is what my grandfather might have seen when he was there in Vancouver, 1912. Uh, so this is, this is making it more personal and rememberable. And now imagine the potential that we have with that for a store, for example. Uh, so you have that sort of images, you have a promotion in your store, you overlay your own images on top of the street side photos that come from, from Microsoft. So for the Easter business, for the Christmas business, for the next vacation, if you have a certain promotion, you could take... Uh, responsibility for exchanging that sort of photos and displaying that optionally in the context of that street side images. That has a lot of potential, I think. This personalization also uh, becomes quite interesting when we think about more complex structures